hi everyone. I am Clarissa, one of the researchers who is searching for new antibiotics under our feet. I'm here today to introduce you a special series of activities that we'll be doing in collaboration with undergraduate students uh, from University of St. Andrews, which is just right over there. I am very, very fortunate that uh, we here at the university are located a five minute walk away from the beach. So I can just come here anytime and enjoy the view and it's, it's quite nice. But in any case, this special series of videos is going to feature um, marine microbes. And if you follow our website, you are well, well aware of what microbes are. And microbes are organisms that are too small to be seen by our naked eye. So we need to use microscopes to see them. And 70% um, of, the, of the planet is made of oceans. So there are a lot of space to be occupied by microbes. And in fact, uh, if we weight everything that's alive in the sea, 90% of this weight corresponds to microorganisms. So, wow. <laughs> because of this, there is so much potential and so much diversity that comes from marine environments. And we often don't really think about this, but every environment is slightly different and it will contain a different combination of microorganisms. So if we just look around us, for example, what's going to be in the sand, what's going to be in these puddles, on top of these rocks, closer to the ocean and on the ocean itself, is very, very, very different. With technology that we developed somewhat recently, some researchers have estimated that if we take a single grain of sand, this grain of sand is going to be coated by 10,000 to 100,000 bacteria or microorganisms. And if we compare two different grains of sand, uh, these two grains of sand are going to share only half of the same types of microorganisms. So 50% of these two grains are different. And this means that there is a lot of different cool information that we can find out if we study uh, microbes from the sea more. And in some ways, uh, we're still looking for antibiotics under our feet, just our feet in a different place. And we are going to be using, uh, if we want to find out what uh, microbes are in the sea or in the sand, we'll use very similar techniques than the ones that we use to study microorganisms in the soil. So we can collect samples, we can extract DNA from these samples, and then we can uh, use the same technology that we use to find out what uh, is in that DNA, the genetic information, that would then give us information to try to figure out what kinds of microorganisms are around us. And because microorganisms change so much, and they've been around for so long, they have developed a, a lot of different strategies to cope with extreme and harsh conditions. So for example, just looking here in St. Andrews today, it's a quite cold day. And I can imagine that the temperature of the North Sea is very cold. Uh, these microorganisms, they have been around for millions of years and they have developed strategies to cope with the high concentration of salt, the low temperatures. And if you think about it, there's not a lot of food available for them because there is a lot of water in the sea. So the food is very diluted and the nutrients, what they need to survive is also very diluted. So they have evolved different strategies to use these resources and not just to exist, but to thrive and to multiply and to still be around after all these millions of years. In any case, because of all this, studying marine microbes can open a lot of possibilities for us as humans and help us solve several problems. Some of us of our own making like global warming, but other problems such as trying to find uh, new drugs and new antibiotics. Hopefully you'll find this new series of activities interesting. And I'm gonna go on and proceed with my walk around the beach. The sun is coming out and I think it's gonna warm up a little. Goodbye everyone.